All right, guys. I don't believe it. We have a a rainy day here in the end times, although the sun is coming out and it is a spectacularly gorgeous, once again, over the top beautiful day here in the end times. Deep in the Point Lonesome Swamp uh, under the leaky tin roof. I have four more days of having a leaky tin roof over my head, so uh, I'm here enjoying the sound of the rain dripping on my leaky roof here on this gorgeous, uh, it is a Wednesday morning, <clears throat> I believe it's March 9th, 2022, somewhere around there, so we are, I guess, although I can barely remember, <clears throat> doesn't mean much to me, but I guess we're heading into tax season and a lot of people <clears throat> including my good friend Sandy Shellis <clears throat> apparently freaking out over tax season uh, I guess D-Day I think is Sandy's birthday April 15th so uh, while all of the panic sheeple uh, are in freak out mode uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting here like I do every tax season, sitting here in my easy chair with my little dog listening to the rain on my leaky roof. And um, so guys, uh, I haven't done an IRS rant in a couple of years. I have a lot of them on here uh, and I'm gonna try not to uh, repeat myself too much, but I'm simply, going to offer for whatever it's worth to you uh, this is my this is Hamlin Little Tales uh, we will call this rant dealing with the IRS for dummies 101 and uh, so anyway I'm just gonna sit here and tell you what I have learned in my life uh, I am 62 years old, and my first job making $2.65 an hour at the shoveling dog shit at the Briarcliff Animal Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. I was 14, so I have almost 50 years of dealing with the Internal Revenue Service. And I, as I have said several times, with no trace of irony, well, I guess there is a little bit of a trace of irony here, but this is an absolutely true statement, <clears throat> uh, which I remember when I was uh, visiting James Howard Kunstler. This is what he wanted to talk about, was my contention that uh, the IRS has saved me more money than any other person, organization, whatever, uh, I personally want to send out a big thank you to the Internal Revenue Service for saving me thousands and thousands of dollars uh, over the last 48 years, particularly the last uh, 20, 25 years of my life. Um, I have never, dealing with the Internal Revenue Service, I have never had anything but uh, a, a pleasant professional uh, association with the IRS. And the, the reason for this, I guess, is because I have never ever brought a lawyer into it. The number one rule of dealing with the Internal Revenue Service is to deal with them directly. Do not, under any circumstances, until your back is against the wall and the knife is at your throat, do not ever hire a lawyer to defend yourself 
against the Internal Revenue Service. That is the biggest way to fuck yourself. There are two people who are going to win if you get a lawyer uh, against the IRS. You're not one of them. The IRS is not one of them. It is your lawyer and their lawyer. Nobody else is going to benefit from this. So if, 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 if you are ever thinking about getting a lawyer to defend yourself against the Internal Revenue Service for whatever claim they're making against you, whatever bill, outrageous bill they're sending to you, whatever, shit can that idea and deal with them directly. I, oh, oh yeah, before I, I, I launch into this, I, I, I've got to make one big disclaimer that uh, if, if you are, you know, a good little obedient wage slave, uh, you, you know, just working for the man, drawing your paycheck, where the IRS automatically takes your money out of your check and already has your money, uh, you are part of the system. You're being a good little obedient slave just letting the Internal Revenue Service uh, decide how much money they're going to take uh, out, out of your hard-earned cash. And I'm not talking to you uh, because I, I, I don't have anything but sympathy for you. Just turning over your power to, to let uh, probably some uh, goddamn billion dollar global corporation you're working for and the IRS figure out how much of your money to take from you. I, I have no advice for you. All you have is my sympathy. What I am addressing this to is to those of us who uh, have pretty much dedicated their lives to not being good little obedient wage slaves, but, but somehow uh, structuring your life and your earnings to where you are responsible for paying these guys, okay? It is between you and them. Uh, you hold, if you hold the cash, you hold at least a little bit of power and you hold more power than you probably realize. Now, I, again, I, but I gotta put a caveat to the caveat. Like, I have a buddy, you've heard me talk about Jim O in Austin, Texas. He's my age. 62, so he's old enough to start earning Social Security, but the thing about uh, Jim O, he has 100% dedicated his life to not being a, uh, a good little obedient wage slave. The man has never paid one penny of taxes to the Internal Revenue Service since the day he was born. Never filed taxes since the day he was born, completely goes about his life completely uh, outside, under the radar of, of uh, the Internal Revenue Service. And it hasn't been that hard. Never paid a penny of taxes. But what he's learned now the hard way is if you never pay taxes, okay, and you really tell these guys to get out of your fucking life, where you're going to pay for it is you're not going to be able to draw Social Security. So at some point in your life, if you're taking this tax and you have never paid taxes, you have got to get on the hamster wheel for two years. It's actually seven quarters. It's actually at some point in your life, you're going to have to buckle down for a year and nine months, but I would make it two years and work for the man. So thank God uh, I was a piss hauler for the world's biggest drug testing company, uh, Quest Diagnostics. So my social security 
uh, which is the absolute minimum Social Security you can get, e e even though I was making plenty of money as a successful realtor, uh, they based it on my time working for Quest Diagnostics Incorporated where they, you know, had this steady little record of it, and so that's what they based it on. So you have got to, at some point, get you some fucking slacker job like being a piss hauler uh, for two years so you can have a chance of getting the minimum amount of Social Security uh, when you, you know, when you turn 62, assuming there's going to be any Social Security. So with those disclaimers, what I'm getting ready to say, uh, to talk to people, is people uh, who, at, at least now in their lives, are not good little wage slaves, and you are responsible for figuring out how much money you owe the Internal Revenue Service that it is your job uh, every April 15th to, to figure out how much you owe them and hope to hell that they agree with you and, uh, and, and just accept whatever your figures are. And my guess is that 99.9% .9 of the time uh, they will do that for the simple reason that probably, I, I'm just, Throwing a dart here, my guess is that minimally 50% of the time that people send more money to the Internal Revenue Service than the Internal Revenue Service would have accepted. You know, it, it doesn't matter even if it's fucking raining and these clueless fucking morons out driving around in the fucking rain. I hope the hell a goddamn lightning bolt uh, takes out that clueless moron motherfucker. But anyway, we're not here to talk about airboats. We're here to talk about the Internal Revenue Service. So anyway, uh, my, my number one uh, advice uh, for, for you guys is, okay, uh, if you are actively employed, if, if you're working a full-time job, you're out there, you, you know, earning money and doing all that. Number one piece of advice is hire a fucking accountant to take care of it for you. All right. Uh, anybody uh, who would do this on their own. My God, the, the, the amount of, uh, of time, energy, stress, that, that would have gone into me figuring out uh, this, this number. Uh, let an accountant do it. There's, an, uh, there's a reason that a fucking accountant uh, it does what they do. Whatever money you pay to an accountant, I assure you, will uh, be worth that money. Uh, ten times over, namely because your accountant uh, will know, should know, if you have a halfway decent accountant, how to get that number down lower than you would have gotten it down yourself. Uh, they know how far they can push the envelope. So hire an accountant. Uh, but it, but even with all this, at some point, if you're anything like me and probably millions of other people, I have no idea what's going on uh, with Sandy right now. Sandy, would you call so we can call me so we can talk about this? It, it, at some point, you are going to run afoul of the Internal Revenue Service. If you are not a good little obedient wage slave and with or without an accountant, uh, at some point uh, you are probably going to brush up against these people and this is where I can come in. This is what I have learned. As I say, I've, I have many rants about this 
and some very funny stories that you can find. I'm not going to repeat myself, but, but here is the bottom line that most people do not understand. When they do get one of these terrifying letters from the Internal Revenue Service. Okay, uh, another, uh, another tip, you will never, ever get a phone call or an email from the Internal Revenue Service. If anybody ever calls you, claiming, calls you or emails you, claiming to be from the IRS, they are a scammer. The IRS does not call or email you 100% of their correspondence is going to come through the mail. And if you're anything like me and so many other people I know, at some point you're gonna get a terrifying letter from the Internal Revenue Service claiming that you owe some astronomical uh, uh, amount of money that they pulled out of their ass just hoping that uh, you're going to be so terrified of them that you're going to sit there and just write a check for whatever they tell you, thinking you're going to fucking jail or, or whatever. Okay, so uh, this has happened to me twice uh, in, in, in my life. And uh, the first time it happened was in the year 2006 when I got a letter from the Internal Revenue Service claiming I owed them $30,000. $30,000. Uh, pay up now or all of these fines and all of these penalties are gonna start getting tacked onto this $30,000 and, and all of this shit. So after my initial panic, what I went is I I got in my car and I went down in person to the Internal Revenue Service Help Center. Now I have heard some bad news that there it's it, it's there's not as many of these help centers as there used to be. But what you want to do is you want to get yourself in a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody who works at the IRS. Okay, believe it or not, there are real human beings who work at the Internal Revenue Service. Real live human beings, just like you, just like me, who probably have their own problems with the IRS. Okay, you need to get in a face-to-face -face conversation with a real human being. And I guess absolutely failing that, you need to be on the telephone. Okay. Do not. Is there anything about this you do not understand? Do not show up there with a lawyer. Do not ever let the word lawyer escape your mouth while you're talking to these people. And the other thing is, check your fucking attitude at the door when you go uh, when, when you go in there. You need them a hell of a lot more than they need you. Check your fucking cocky ass attitude at the fucking door. When you walk in there, you are on your hands and knees begging. You go for the sympathy and if you can leave them laughing, you pull the all shucks, uh, just, uh, you, you know, pull the ignorant uh, country bumpkin routine. Uh, be nothing but apologetic, embarrassed, begging, uh, let them know that you are at their mercy and self-effacing humor will be your best weapon. Self-effacing humor 
face to face. So what happened to me the first time I, I did this in 2006, they, they, uh, they said I owed them $30,000. And what people do not understand, apparently the big secret that the IRS does not want you to know, especially when they, they send these scary letters out to you, dealing with the IRS is like buying a blanket from a Mexican street vendor in Tijuana. You can make an offer. They start and you respond. You can make, I think the technical term is an offer in kind or whatever their term board is, you can bargain with the Internal Revenue Service. So what I did the first time when I went in there with that $30,000 bill, I offered them 20 cents on the dollar. I offered them $6,000. 20 cents on the dollar. I knocked off $24,000 and uh, you know they said, well, uh, Mr. Mitchell, how much do you have that you, you, you know? And I said, $6,000. I said, guys, I've got $6,000 that, that I can pony up uh, and, and, and if, if we can settle this. And the dude immediately agreed to it. Immediately took my 20 cents on the dollar offer. So I settled this $30,000 uh, claim by the IRS for $6,000. So I, 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 I paid him the goddamn six grand and we were done with it. And uh, so it was, what year was it? Was it 2012 or 13 or 14? I can't remember. But anyway, uh, somewhere along uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, I can't even remember the year anymore, guys. I got a bill from the Internal Revenue Service from my, from my 2008 taxes, which was the last year that I was a clueless uh, fucking moron real estate agent and investor. Uh, I got a bill like five years after my taxes were due claiming that I owed them $58,000. It took like four or five years for this letter to get to me saying, you know, this scary sounding letter, 58,000 fucking dollars, and if you don't pay us $58,000, it, it, it's going to be $68,000 tomorrow, and $78,000 the next day, you're going to the poor house, <coughs> don't pay us, you're going to fucking prison, uh, uh, all of this, this fucking bullshit, it's fucking bullshit. So I get this letter. For fifty-eight thousand dollars, would you stop squirming? Fine. Would you go down? And so, uh, so I had learned a big lesson from two thousand six. I, I, I said, "Well, goddamn!" Uh, I offered them uh, twenty cents on the dollar uh, last time around, so I'm going to offer them ten cents on the dollar. So anyway, so I go down and I, and I have the whole story. It really is a funny story that, that I'm not going to recount here. And I highly advise if you can walk into the building at like 4.30 on a Friday afternoon when these people are ready to go home for the weekend. Uh, try to aim your visit for late on Friday afternoon. And so anyway, I had my showdown with this very nice woman. Again, I won't repeat uh, the story, but it, but it ended up, uh, it ended up that I offered 10 cents on the dollar. So 58,000, uh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, folks, I am sorry. I am sorry, uh, I, I, I am misreporting this. It's been so many years. When I got the letter for $58,000, the first thing I did was I responded back to the letter offering them $5,800. That's right, there was this middle step. So since they took 
the 20 cents on the dollar, I said, let's go for 10 cents on the dollar. So when I first got the letter, I just responded back to it. I will offer you 5,800. I just took the zero off the end, sent that off to the IRS seven months later. I heard nothing, nothing. For seven more months, goes and comes to my offer. They respond back to me. They did not take my $5,800 offer. They put the zero back, but they took the five off. Are you following me? They went from $58,000 to $8,000. All right, and uh, so right there, uh, just simply writing that letter offering 10 cents on the dollar, they took $50 thousand dollars off so we had gone from fifty eight thousand to eight thousand and this is the point that uh, I went down to the uh, to the IRS uh, help center and I uh, had that hilarious uh, meeting uh, which again it really is a funny story uh, you should maybe can find it in here somewhere met with that woman uh, right at the close on a Friday afternoon. And just to give you one example, uh, I was just basically going down there figuring out how, you know, how to handle the $8,000 uh, at, at, at that point. Um, and uh, so, you know, she's going through my file and, and just one of the many items, I'm, I'm just going to tell this one story about dealing with the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, you know, I had the woman laughing and, and did all of this routine, but uh, uh, of course I told her, you know, she was asking me about 2009. You know, now she was going ahead. I mean, I went in there over 2008. And she asked, uh, and so then she's poking around 2009. So one of the things she finds in there is that I had, I had uh, cashed in, this is an oversimplification, I had cashed in my retirement that ultimately came from being a piss hauler. Uh, I won't get into the details, but you have to be 59 and a half years old when you cash in your retirement. All right, well, I cashed it in and put the goddamn money in my pocket when I was like 55, 54 or 55, somewhere in there. I cashed it in early, and uh, so she busted me on it. And I went, oh, well, there, there is that. Uh, so, you know, when, when I did this, you know, people were telling me like, Hambone, you're going to get fucked by the IRS. You're, you're going to be paying fines. You're going to be paying interest and penalties uh, when, when they kick your ass and all of this stuff. So anyway, it ended up that right there for doing that, uh, I owed $3,500. I, I didn't think she would have it in her damn computer. She pulls up right there. It was only February of 2009, and uh, she goes, well, what about, uh, you know, what about this uh, IRA you cashed in early? Uh, you know, you're up to $3,500 on that, and I went, oh, I said, well, I guess that one uh, slipped my mind, and she kind of laughed, and what she did is she goes, bink. And, and she looks at me, and, and I said, I said, did you do what I think you just did? And she goes, what do you think I just did? And I said, I think you hit a button and made that $3,500 go poof into thin air. And she just goes, and she winks at me and goes, it's just our little secret, Mr. Mitchell. 
and I just said thank you. I, I said really. I, I, I said darling, and, and, and from the bottom of my heart, all joking aside, thank you. The woman hit a fucking button. Three thousand five hundred dollars went poof in the air. You have to understand that this person in front of you has the power to reach over with their finger and go bink and make thousands of dollars disappear into the air. Right there, the Internal Revenue Service saved me over $3,000 by punching a button. You need to suck up to that to whoever uh, you're talking to by whatever means you can think of to suck up to them. Remember, they are a person just like you. They might be an IRS bureaucrat, but they are a person who you need more than they need you. And uh, so anyway, uh, I need to, I'm, I'm not going to repeat the story of what happened with that $8,000. So I agreed with them that I owed them $8,000. So we settled into the agreement that uh, this was at least five years ago, and I think it might have been as much as seven years ago, we agreed that I owed them $8,000 instead of $58,000. I'm going to stop the story here as much as I would love to tell the rest of the story. I've told it before, but uh, even I... Uh, have enough restraint to know when to shut the fuck up. And we will leave it at that. And uh, so, anyway, I don't know, did you learn anything? Okay, did you learn anything? Okay, just real quick to recap, you have to be a good little obedient wage slave somewhere in your lifetime for two years to get your Social Security. That's number one takeaway. Number two, if you structure your life where you're not going to be a good little obedient wage slave uh, and decide that you are going to deal directly with the IRS, hire an accountant let an accountant figure out how much you owe the IRS. I assure you uh, that, that, that that accountant will earn every single penny. Hire an accountant, okay, to figure out how much to, to send those Stephen varmints and if you do receive one of these letters uh, talking about how much you owe them, one of these terrifying letters, your response to the letter is to offer them, well, number one, your response is do not get anywhere near a fucking lawyer. Do not even let the thought of a lawyer enter your mind. If you get one of these scary letters, offer them 10% on the dollar. Just take off uh, the last zero. Put a, literally put a line through the last zero. Send that offer back to them. If it's uh, $50,000, uh, that you owe them, offer them $5,000 and see what they say. It will probably be seven months later, you're going to get uh, a letter back and uh, a hell of a lot closer to your $5,000 offer than to their $50,000 initial bullshit number they pulled out of their ass to scare you. And at that 
point, at that point, go down to the Internal Revenue Service on late on Friday afternoon, check your fucking attitude at the door, and just treat that this person in front of you like you would want to be treated. And uh, that is the big secret how to negotiate with the Internal Revenue Service for dummies. And with that, I am done thinking about the Internal Revenue Service. Will probably be nowhere uh, in my mind again. Minimally till April 15th of next year when I got to figure out what to do about these, what is it, $4,500 tax bill I have for uh, flipping this place in Florida. Uh, here I owe $4,500 and uh, <laughs> Take a wild guess, I guess, what I'm going to offer them. <clears throat> but that will be then, and this is now, and a whole hell of a lot of shit can come down between now and April 15th of 2023. But I need to get back to, uh, get back <coughs> to being an unscrewer. Get out there and unscrew your life while you still can. Bye, guys. Man, look at this spectacularly gorgeous day. It is. The rain has come through and washed the smoke and grime out of the sky. Let's hope those uh, big-ass wildfires up in the panhandle just got put out my guess is there is no wildfire in the panhandle although there might be a tornado to take its place bye guys